How's it going everybody? For today's beer review, we're going to be taking a look at Ballast Point Brewing Company's Sea Monster, an Imperial Stout. So what we have here is an Imperial Stout by Ballast Point. Now, these guys have a pretty big reputation, but I haven't had a lot of stuff um, from them. So this is their Sea Monster, and it comes in at... Oh, don't tell me there's not an ABV written on this. Oh, 10% alcohol by volume, so it's really big. Now, what's interesting to note is there's a best buy date on it, and it says to enjoy it by February 27th of 2014. Effectively making this, if we're going off that, almost a year out of date. The thing is, I call bullshit. There's no special flavors in this beer that are going to fade over time. This isn't like a, you know, uh, a stout that has additional things in it that are, that would fade. You know, this is just an imperial stout, and it's definitely well above the minimum in alcohol by volume. So I don't know if they just have to put a best buy date or what, but. I don't agree with that at all. The commercial description is Sea Monster Imperial Stout. From the deep, dark depths of our brewmaster's imagination comes this rich and monstrous oatmeal stout. Our Sea Monster embodies all that the true dark beer aficionado will appreciate. Roasted coffee notes with hints of bittersweet chocolate and currant flavors, all brought together by a perfect hop balance. Perhaps that is why they want you to drink it somewhat fresh, because it loses, you know, stouts lose, the first thing that goes is their hoppiness, which I think for a stout is a good thing, because it just makes the malt and the chocolate and everything stand out that bit more. So maybe they wanted to have that kind of hoppiness to it to make a hop balance. Like I said, I disagree. Um, now, what I would really like is if they had a bottling date on this, so I would know truly how old this is, but of course there isn't one because a lot of places still don't do that for some reason. Don't know why. Anyway, I'm going to be drinking this out of my Duvel snifter glass today. So let's get the cap off of it now and um, see how it's aged. All right. Wow, I can smell something pretty good from here. Straight out the color. It's extremely dark brown, almost pitch black, straight out of the bottle. I'm pouring this very aggressively. It has a pretty decent head potential. I would call it about a finger and a half to two fingers of very dark tan, maybe even light brown colored head. Um, no need to hold this one up in the light because it's pitch black. You can't see any light through it. Um, that's how I like stouts to be. Uh, as far as the smell goes, Wow, that smells really fantastic. It almost smells more like a Russian Imperial Stout. It kind of has that... I guess it's the current that I'm smelling. There's tons of like prune, fig, and raisin. Very dark fruits. Um, raisin and prune being the big two on this. And plum even. Dark chocolate. A little bit of coffee. Little notes of things like star anise, fennel, licorice, blackstrap molasses. And just that kind of almost herbal medicinal quality. I know it takes someone who's really into a certain type of like beverage to know that a medicinal note isn't always something like it. It sounds like it's nasty. It's not. It, it kind of categorizes, uh, or characterizes rather, an imper a Russian imperial style. It's just sort of this herbal, medicinal kind of tone that goes along with those um, fennel, star anise, and licorice smells, and, and tastes usually too. Um, and it's very complimentary to them, so it's a good thing. But, smells fantastic. Just a little bit of alcohol on the nose. Not much though, uh, which is impressive considering it's 10%. So let's give it a taste and see if it's good, even though we're about a year past their best buy date.
Oh yeah, really good. It's it tastes great. I don't. I think maybe I don't know if they had to have like a law or something that states they have to have a Best Buy date on it or what, but it tastes good to me. It's got. Sweet, lightly smoky malts up front. A good amount of alcohol to it. I'm getting the plum, the raisin, and the prune coming through in the um, taste. Definitely getting bittersweet chocolate in the back. Nothing too crazy as far as the coffee goes. I mean, it's definitely present. It's mostly this kind of dark cooked fruit, dark bittersweet chocolate thing going on. Um, and it's really good. As far as a rating goes for this, I would say in the style I'd probably give it about an 89 to a 90 in the style. Um, it could definitely work um, on the coffee just a little bit, but it's also doing a lot more on the dark fruit sides of things than most stouts do. So maybe I'll actually bump that up to about like a 91 in the style because I do like that they're focusing on that, or at least it seems like they are. Um, and then for my own personal rating, To me, very good stuff. I would probably give this about like a 97 out of 100. Um, really high up there for me. I'm enjoying this one a lot. So if you see it, I say don't be afraid if it's past the Best Buy date because it doesn't matter at all. It's delicious as it is right now. That has been my review of Ballast Point Brewing Company's Sea Monster Imperial Stout. Hope you guys enjoyed the beer review as always and stay tuned for the next one.